Oak Street Hall, and uh, I worked at, what did I do? I Drake B. Morton? Huh? Drake, Drake B. Morton, I worked there, and then I, uh, I also, um, it was you, me, I went to the dean's office when, when, we, when Sigrid told me that we could have a department or we could have a whatever program. And I went to the dean's office and I said, uh, D. Luker, uh, I, I wondered, I know that you don't have, I know you can't, don't have room but for one faculty member, but could you tell me how long it would be perhaps before I could join the, 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 that faculty? And he said, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to say something that's going to make you feel good? I said, of course I want the truth. He said, minimum five years. And I started crying in his office, and I'm a terrible crier. <laughs> Flooded the office, came downstairs, and I said, Sigrid, I don't know what's going to happen, but it'll take five years for us to get this department, and, and, and it's going to take me, him five years to hire me. And she said, let's go for a walk, doctor. We called each other doctor because nobody else called us doctor. And uh, we were walking down the street, and she said, and she paused and she said, it's going to be five years. No, no, five, not going to be five years, it's going to be, what did you tell me? It was some, I said, by this time next year you'll be working That's for right. the university. That's right. <laughs> and I, whatever it was, I, you know, I stopped crying. <laughs> I was crying in the street. I, and, I, and, she, and I said, how? She said, uh, we'll work it out. But I'm going to tell you what she did to make this all possible. She skirted over the fact that at Denton State School, they agreed to send their students here. She, Sigrid, functioned as the chief psychologist. They were they either were looking for one or she was a temporary whatever. It was she was chief psychologist of Denton State School. She got up every morning and was at that campus at five o'clock in the morning. And then she came over at ten. I thought it was twelve. It was ten. At 10 o'clock, she came over to assume her duties as chair of the de of a of, of a two or three man department. The unit director of a one person unit. unit yeah, she was. Me. The, that's right. <laughs> and I, I, I was always so. Uh, that's the first time I realized that Sigrid really meant business about this. They had unit director meetings, and she was the director of our program. And uh, whenever it was time for the unit director pro unit directors to meet. She would march out of that out of the office and down the hall, and I watched her. And she came back with me and said, "You know, Doctor, you look like you're head of a whole army." I mean, she came in there with that head up. And why don't you tell them about why don't you tell them about the problem we have the same? I said, "Well, I got to tell you what I said when you said you look like you're the head of a whole army." Oh, okay. I said, "I am the head of a whole army. <laughs> I'm the head of all the people who worked at the Center for Behavioral Studies and wanted to make something happen, and they're all gone now, but they're all behind me." <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I feel like I'm leading them into the charge. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, I can't. When you, you start talking, and I'll remember. Oh, I know. Uh, I told you she had a full-time job. She had a job outside of. She was a consult. She was worked as a consultant, as a chief psychologist at Denton State School. Then she was also the one, the one person Department of Behavior Analysis, and she taught. Was it you taught? The real problem was I was the editor of the behavior analyst. Oh, that was <laughs> at the same oh. time. <laughs> yeah. And she had a husband and wife, a hundred husband and a child at home. That she waking up in a panic during the night. <laughs> oh boy. She got about five hours sleep. <laughs> Just about five hours sleep every night. That's yeah. incredible. You bet. So, how has it changed? Um, in and by it, I mean. Um, how have the goals of the department evolved, or have they evolved? Or? Well, you know, as far as I was concerned personally, the goal was to build the department as much as I could build it as, as its chair or director or whatever I was at various times, to have a the best group of people I could find, uh, people who were totally committed to behavior analysis, who would be willing to work hard and work, you know, uh, 
uh, amicably with a common goal, which was to advance behavior analysis and advance the, our program and to teach the students as best as we know and to put out the best students that we could possibly put out. And that's what our goal always was, at least from my perspective. And as far as I know, it's still the goal. I don't, to my knowledge, it hadn't changed. If it has, nobody told me. <laughs> so, um, do you have any words of advice for students who are interested in behavior analysis? Yeah, I do. I say learn as much as you can from as many people as you can and uh, listen to a lot of different perspectives as long as they're all behavior analytic. And if you have a little bit of time to listen to other perspectives, it's not a bad idea. But uh, there are many perspectives within behavior analysis. And I think it's really important that students listen to all those different behavior analytic perspectives because variability is really important and each student can take from all those people what they find useful for them and then have a unique repertoire that they will be able to advance the next generation. Thank you. And do you have any funny stories you'd like to share? Oh, there are several funny stories. Uh, let me tell you one of them. One funny story is that uh, when we were still over in the quads over here at the Center for Behavioral Studies when Don Whaley was still alive, and I kept pressuring him to try to get courses for us, behavior analysis courses. I never understood whether he really didn't want behavior analysis courses, whether he still had an idea of taking over psychology, or whether he really believed it was hopeless, or whether he tried with the dean, who was Hiram Friedson at the time to get courses. I never knew why, but I kept pressuring him to get behavior analysis courses. And he kept saying, you know, you have to go to the coordinating board. You can't just have a course. You have to get permission from the coordinating board and whatever. So um, after the dean, Bill Luker, got to be the dean, and he said, oh, sure, I'd like to have some courses. Uh, then we submitted a proposal for some courses. And at that time, the university's course titles were three letters, like PSY for psychology or CHM for chemistry. And so uh, they, I put in a proposal for four behavior analysis courses and they had, it was, a, it was ABN 2010, ABN 2150, ABN, and gave four numbers like that with titles to them. So the vice president, Bob Toulouse, who was, uh, who was pretty much on our side, I think, as it turns out, uh, Bob Toulouse uh, called me up one time and he said, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, uh, sign off on these four courses. You're not going to have to put them through the uh, committees because it's just four courses, so I can just sign off on them and they can go to the coordinating board. And, he, and I said, you mean, I, you mean we, and they can be called ABN? And he said, no, no, they can't be called that. He said, you have to have four letters. I said, four letters? He said, yeah, we're changing all the course uh, short versions to four letters like P S Y C and C H E M. I said, Oh, four letters. How about A B A N? He says, Sure. <laughs> so I thought he was basically saying we couldn't have behavior analysis. <laughs> he said, No, you just have to have four letters. Just fix that. <laughs> um, take a break. Okay, but there was, there was something uh, I also wanted to be sure you, you knew. Sigrid had a private practice. We, we decided we had to have some income while we were waiting or whatever. So Sigrid and Judy Stowe and Ed Framer and myself went into private practice. Well, Ed and Judy, that was no, a, no, Judy left the, left the center. That was all before any of us, anybody left the center. It was 1982 that we started the private practice. Would it be all right to tell about writing the letters and about how you wrote? How Go ahead, tell. Um, <laughs> we, we, Toulouse either said or, or something, Sigrid said, we need letters to support us. I don't know who told, but she, I know she told me, and I said, okay. So we wrote about four, we got about 400, no, we got 400 letters in. Yes, we did. Toulouse, okay. Two letters, three, four, five. We got quite a few letters, quite a, certainly not a hundred. From who? People in, uh, in the field who taught in universities at George Mount, for example, was an old friend of a center who taught at uh, a community college. I don't remember which one it was. Mountain, Mountain View, View, I think, yeah. That's Mountain right. View Community College. Uh, Dan, I uh, can't remember his last name now, who taught at uh, the one in 
Collin County, uh, Plano. Was, uh, so these, these are, uh, a variety of people around the state who were involved in behavior analysis and uh, the woman who Cherry McSween later worked for down in Beaumont. Um, but we got letters outside of Texas, Sigrid. Yeah, I, we, we had so many different letter writing campaigns over the years that it's hard to uh, hard to remember which one was which. But this was so early on that uh, I think it was before we had as many contacts in the field as we later had. Because Wait, are you uh, talking about when you went to the different educational venues and said if we had a course of behavior analysis would anybody take it? Is that what you're talking about? No, but that was uh, that was early on too. That was before we even moved over to Oak Street Hall. Janet and Judy Stowe and I went around to community colleges all over the area with a little slideshow about applied behavior analysis. And we told that we got permission from these people that we knew in the field in these community colleges if we could show our slideshow and tell them about a program we were trying to start. And so we we took it around. We we. Uh, showed them the thing, and we asked them if they were interested to fill out a little slip of paper uh, that said, well, I'm interested in a program in applied behavior analysis, and so they filled them all out. And so we went to probably 10 or 15 schools in the area. We collected them all. Many, many students said they were interested. We clipped them all together. Well, uh, we put them in the back. it was only later that we used those. Yeah. Uh, because I forgot what happened. Some some change in the venue happened and we didn't use those at that time, but we kept them. And then later when we were trying to get our master's degree, degree program, while Don Whaley was still alive, not the one we eventually got, but the one before Don Whaley died, that master's degree program, uh, we we took all those and we threw put them out on the table at, at the, the graduate, at the graduate at the grad council, council to su show the, what kind of interest there was. We knew they were going to say there's not any interest in a degree program in behavior analysis. You're not going to get any students. So we put those. When they said that, we we had boxes of them literally, and we put them on the table. We just turned the boxes over and dumped all this stuff out on the table. And and Dr. Haynes, the the chairman that year of the graduate council was Jack Haynes. A wonderful man. He didn't he didn't dislike anybody, and he was as fair a person as you'd hope to meet. And he was the one that that had the final say so. And he said, "Sure, go ahead." He, you know, and uh, no, he, the graduate dean is the head of the. Graduate well, okay, but <laughs> Jack Haynes was the head of that council. I know, but I don't want misinformation to be out. Okay, there. okay, <laughs> okay. Well, little details like that. <laughs> Jack Hayes, if he had to Jack said Haynes yes. Jack was the person who agreed. He agreed. If he had said no. And the other thing. He was a visitor to the council. He wasn't even on it. They just asked him to come in and, and decide because he was in the decide, site. Just give his opinion. And he was in the site department. He Was he the chair at that time? Yes, he was. And so if he had said no, and also, I want to tell. If he said no, they would have had an excuse to reject us. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. You can turn off the stuff. Let me just tell you. Sigrid came to me one day. And she and, and about the books. Remember, mm -hmm. remember uh, when that I can, I, we don't put any names in here. But that that at that time the woman who was so important in the business school who didn't want behavior analysis and had talked badly and said nobody nobody uh, is interested in behavior analysis. We don't need a course like that. I, I don't know. I don't remember her name. I can hear it. And uh, Sigrid said, Doctor, because we didn't. Nobody else called us Doctor. She said, uh, I went over to the bookstore and there's some books there on psychology and we need to go through them. And so she took half and I took half. And I can remember it was hot as hell out. It was very hot outside. And I, she did hers in the morning. She always got the best times. And I got to do mine in the afternoon. And it was, and the library was air conditioned in, even mm -hmm. in those days. Huh? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, I ought to tell them about that one. That was after we found all the rest. And, and they said, nobody no, nobody cares about behavior analysis. Nobody's heard of it. And so this, this was a woman speaking up for the psych department. And so we went through every textbook that the psych department had used, and many of them had, or the psychology department, many of them had behave, were written by authors of behave, important people in behavior analysis. And every single time, Skinner's name, we just had for Skinner's name, remember? I remember that. I sat on the floor of the bookstore with all those books around me. I knew a couple of people. They said, you can't sit on the floor. I said, you try to get me up. And so 
I sat on the floor. She did it in the morning. She always got the best times. And then I, I was there in the afternoon, had all those books around me, and we found how many did we? Yes. That's, I think, that's not. I, we I'm went not together. Forgetting. No, we did and not. We made lists. And we yes. looked in the index yeah, of the thing. We, we looked didn't. for every page in the book that had any reference to behavior analysis, opera conditioning, classical conditioning, right. yeah, a Skinner, or anything. Right. And we listed the number of times in those textbooks there was any mention of behavior analysis. And Skinner. And it would turn out there was a 450 page textbook that had two paragraphs on behavior analysis. So we basically said, this is not teaching behavior analysis, but this was for when we were trying to get the undergraduate degree after we already had the master's right, degree. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, we had the master's degree first, we got in 1989, and then in, 19, in 1997 or thereabouts, we, we went to try to get the bachelor's degree. Well, every time we went to get another degree, which was many times, because many times we didn't get it, we had to go through this long process of trying to explain why we needed it and, and what there was. But the, the time you're thinking about where it was so hot it was up in the it was up in the attic. And what we did was this was the first time when Don Whaley was still alive. Yes, he was. Janet and I went they up said and there was the, we, we asked Joe Neal Harris, who was a friend, who we I had been in graduate school with. She was she was in my in my my cohort in graduate school and so she was then the registrar of the university yeah. and so I asked her I said Joe Neal I said we need to get some data from old records I said do you can we get some data on, uh, can we do that and I'd like to get some uh, some information on the courses that were taught for a period of time so she said, sure. And then I said, what about the years? And I gave her the years we wanted. And she said, well, those data are up in the attic of the administration building. Okay. And I said, well, can we go look at them? And she said, well, I don't see any reason why not. So Janet and I went upstairs to the attic, and we got the records out. No and we this was big. Nothing was on a computer then. Great big in, uh, rolls of students over many years. So it had the fall of fall of this period, School of Community Service or Psychology Department, it would have the class role for every single one of their courses. So we would go through and find any course that had a name that sounded anything like behavior analysis. For example, was it uh, operant conditioning or anything that could possibly be construed as behavior analysis. And then we would see how many students were in that course. Well, we found out that over a period of five years leading up to that, there were almost no courses at all taught, at all, period. There used to have one called 572 Behavior Modification that was not being taught, even though it was on the books. Mm -hmm. And we knew they were going to say, we have all these courses on the books. You see, here we have Behavior Modification, this, this, and this. So we said, yeah, but nobody's taking the courses. They're not teaching them. But, they're, they're, you know, we had to have proof for that. So, uh, so we went up and we got the course, nothing in fall, nothing in spring, nothing in So when they... When they came and asked us, when they said that, you know, we teach all those courses. Yeah, but we said, we said they're in the catalog, but you're not teaching them. Because in the last five years, you've taught that course once. And there were 12 people in it. That, that, so you're not teaching that course, you know. And so we did had a lot of data like that. In front of the faculty of the whole school. And we, the, we, it's like a, <laughs> in, in front of the faculty, it, it was a faculty senate hearing, remember? And you got up and gave those data. And the woman who had who had said, well, not that she's the one who said there's nobody took those courses. The faculty senate was when we did the faculty bachelor's okay. degree. Yeah. And man, I mean, she turned four shades of purple, and she sat down and she shut up. And, sig and Sigrid, and I'll never forget it, the head of the psych department, the late he died, you know, or he died. We walked out. And Sigrid was Sigrid had walked out, and, and I walked by, and he looked at me, and he said, "Those aren't those aren't the data I saw." Uh, Ernie Harrell, he was, he was purple. He was so angry. Actually, he he uh, he he said that in the meeting. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. In the in the council. I, I, meeting. Okay. I mean the Senate faculty Senate. He said, "Well, that's not those. That, that's my, not consistent with my data." My data, said. yeah, that's right. Okay, well, but anyway, I know a record. <laughs> You did go up and look at it. <laughs> You're right. Well, and we also had a citation, didn't we, for the, for each one that we found? Or no, was that when? Would, when did the citation thing come along? All I know is we busted our ass, and yeah. and, and uh, we did a lot of work uh, 
preparing to uh, each one of these university interchanges we had to go try to ask for something we had we, we didn't just go ask we had a lot of data well, Sigrid did that, did all that. Well, because I, no, you, oh. we both collected the data. You yeah. and I did it over and over and over again. She and, and we, she opened, a, she had a private practice. We both, we, we, we rented an office space in, in, in Louisville, four of us, Dr. Stowe, Dr. Framer, Framer, Sigrid and myself. And um, Stowe and Framer dropped out pretty quick. Well, Ed got another job, so he left. And Judy got another job. Judy was with us to the end. Oh, okay. And um, they helped pay for uh, they helped pay for my uh, you all pay for my what? I know you pay you all pitched in because I oh I know you helped pay for the they moved out of the office. Judy had a practice and Sigrid was working in Denton, and so I was the last one there. And they paid. They we split the office rent when I was the only one still there for three months uh, for three ways until I could get out of the lease. Yeah, we kept paying because we what our agreement was when we, this was kind of interesting, when we decided we were going to start a private practice as we saw the center beginning to go away, we started we start, we start a private practice and we went to our, it turned out we were all uh, clients of the same accountant. Uh, and we went to the accountant oh, and we yeah. said we want to start a partnership, we want to start a practice of some kind and we want to go in together and he says are you friends and we said yeah, he said don't do it. Michael Lawrence was his name. Because you won't be friends, yeah. you, it'll, that'll be the end of your friendship. So I said no, I don't think so, I think we can do this. And So we pitched in, all of us the same amount of money and we bought office furniture and paid a, a year's lease. And the agreement we had among us, and it was not written, it was just oral, the agreement we had among us was that as long as any one of us wanted to keep that office, the rest of us would leave the furniture there and continue paying on it uh, until all of them, until all four people wanted to leave. Uh, and then we would split the furniture. No, we said, no, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. If somebody left, they wouldn't have to pay the rent anymore. But they, the furniture was kept, but when the office closed eventually, whoever was left still paying the rent would get all the furniture and would do it. So we, were, we did it for a, a year or so, and Ed, Ed Framer, within the year, didn't have time to do it, he was doing something else. But he continued paying his part of the first year's rent, we all four paid. Then he did stop paying rent, so then it was Janet, me, and Judy, and we kept paying rent. Uh, and then Judy, um, got Judy, Judy and Janet used it more because y'all were consulting. And I stopped, I didn't do it at all once I started doing the university stuff. Uh, and so then Janet and Judy were, were working for Drake Bean Morin and doing consulting work. And then Judy went off and did something else. And then Janet was working there doing other consulting work, like you were, you know, doing OBM consulting at that time. And we kept paying, paying the rent through that. Well, eventually, when Janet got full time on the university, we closed the office down. Uh, and at that time, there were still th three people paying the rent. That was Janet, me, and Judy. And we decided we would give Ed, even though he hadn't been paying the rent, the big table. Which yeah, that's right. None of us had much use for her, but it was Pretty a big, very nice conference table. And so we, we said, Ed, do you want this? And he said, yes, he did. And so then we said, okay, now we got all this other stuff. How are we going to divvy it up? And so I said, well, let's do it this way. You remember this if you have siblings, okay? Let's do it this way. Let's, uh, let's take turns picking something out. Let's just make a long list of everything we have, and then uh, we'll, we'll go through the list, and uh, each of us put our top three choices, number one, number two, number three, on the list. And uh, then we'll see what, where we stand. Uh, and then if everybody picks different things, if, if my number one is your number two, then I'll get it. If two people have the same thing as number one, we can flip a coin or whatever. Well, everybody picked three different things. <laughs> so everybody got their top three choices. <laughs> I gotta tell you how this affected my life very, very, very personally. Uh, Sigrid decided, and then what the, the plan here, Sigrid didn't give you the detail. You had, um, you it, it went around. Uh, if it was yeah, my and after those three things, we just went around. Right. You picked one, you picked one, you picked one. But it was everybody had a ch if if we were going to pick something, you had first choice, and then the next time around, 
where I had second choice, I would get first and you would get second. And my father was a painter and um, I adored his work and my husband went with him the first time he had his first painting lesson and it meant, his paintings meant a lot to me. And my sister and I were to divide my father and mother's estate after my mother died. And my mother had saved all of his paintings and um, so my sister and I, I, she said, how are we going to do this because there's furniture and silver and I said, well, it's real simple, Alice. Uh, I'll, I'll give you first choice, then I'll take second, then, you, then I'll take first and you'll take second. Well, every first round, I mean, every time I got first round, I got the paintings. I have every one of my father's paintings are all over my house. My sister picked furniture and silver. All I wanted was those paintings and I've got them and thanks to her because I wouldn't have had them. I wouldn't have ever thought of a system like that. Yeah, Michael Lawrence was the one who told us this is never going to work. There's too many of you, and it's just not going to work. Yeah, you'll, you'll end up not friends now. Nah, yeah, we'll yeah, still yeah. be friends. And we are. We're still yeah. friends. <laughs> so, we still meet every Sunday. So final question for you, Doctor. Um, if I can call you Doctor, too. Or you can call me Janet if you want to. Okay. I don't have to answer. Well, thank you. <laughs> the last question is for you. Do you have any um, advice for students of behavior analysis? Oh, God, yes. I want to tell you that I really believe it's terribly important that you read every, that you read any, any articles that interest you, you save them. Articles in JABA, articles in, I, there's so many journals now I can't, but find a couple of journals that you really find a lot of information in and save them. Don't throw anything. Don't throw your class notes away. Don't throw anything away because I have found so many times going through the, the uh, articles that, were, that I've saved and through the class notes. Save your books. Save don't ever sell a yeah. book back. The other thing is, and I don't, is the department doing this, doing the kind of practicum that we had where, where the students had... I have to ask them. Okay. Um, you don't have to put this on the film. I started a course when I was doing, when I was teaching, um, where the students had to do a behavior analysis project in a real setting. And I mean, or we had we they had to come up. How do I describe it? Say, okay, I, I dem let me demonstrate. There was an election going on in Dallas for um, mayor, and so I came up with a, a a proposal that you had you that you had a firm. Each of each of the groups of students had a firm. And that firm was going to talk to Laura Miller, who was running, she made mayor, that, she, that they would propose to introduce behavior analysis into education, into business, into city management, the whole thing. And, and each group would have a, would be a, 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 uh, a consulting firm. And, that, and, and the audience would be the class. And uh, they had a, a, a a set of whatever you want to call it. Uh, what do you call it when you number things? You bullet know. points. Yeah. What? Bullet points. That's no. I mean, they they. If you liked it, then then you then you checked off this number. It's numbers. Oh, Likert scale. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I hated that course, and uh, and so yes, that's what I had. And we t and they were <clears throat> if and I sat in the classroom with a stopwatch. And I timed all their presentations because you had, let's say that everybody had 15 minutes, but if you stood at the board and drew these things up and you were, you're back to the audience and you talked almost to, to the blackboard like a lot of people still do, then uh, I counted. And, and by your name on a, on, an, uh, on a, what do you call it, sheet, a, um, a feedback sheet, I had it, it went from 1 to 15. And if you, finished your presentation in 10 minutes so that they gave everybody the same amount of time then you got a, a you got plus what for that and then minus is if you if you you know gave us long and a lot of technical terms and didn't explain uh you know and uh, and so that's how I, and and when you if cuz all of you you two will be teaching courses what you want to do is Forget the lectures. Have them read the book. What you lecture is when you sum up at the end of the whole program, uh, at the end of that whole presentation, you point out the pop, you know, you point out what good things the person did to present, and then you kind of summarize for the audience what um, what they said, what the important points were. 
And uh, let me tell you, students said that that really, I mean, and they were held accountable. They, and at the end of the course, each group had to, had to present me with a workbook, a handbook. And they had, it had to have every, I mean, it, it didn't have to have all they had done. It had to have all the information about the topic that they could find. And they, oh, people were so creative. They took pictures and, and uh, anyway, I, had, I still have those. And when I went to schools, because after I left uh, here, I went and worked in schools. Uh, I took those, those, no, those, uh, what do you call it? Handbooks. Handbooks. Mm -hmm. And I showed them to the teachers, and I said, "This is what you need to do. This is what we're going to talk about." I mean, I used them. My God, I could have kissed those students. Mm -hmm. So you'll be glad to know then that that project is still part of um, techniques. Oh, I'm so glad because before that, it was all oh, like Yeah. Thank. Um, okay. So we're going to go ahead and. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut you. Cut you both off. Um, no, I won't <laughs> cut you off. Um, but thanks again for your time. And thank uh, you for asking for talking with me us. and thank her. Thank you very much. And for my side, my, uh, my sidekick. Thank you for asking her. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you love her. Well, that wasn't easy for me to give up.